Hello, everyone. Um, um, as uh, the MC said, I'm um, uh, going to present about DBUS. Um, uh, before I begin, um, a big round of applause, please, for the transcriber. They are doing an amazing job, and it's a very, very difficult job. So. Thank you for that. Um, first of all, who am I? Uh, my name is Ishan Ali, as said. Um, I work for this small company called Red Hat. Uh, no IBM jokes, please. And um, I've been working in FOSS, uh, free and open source software, for a very long time. Uh, my background is with GNOME and uh, related stuff. Uh, but nowadays, I work with this cloud weird things <laughs> and my day job. Um, and I'm into flying, and I love cats. Um, so background story about this talk, right? Um, it starts with a project called GeoClue. It's, uh, does anyone know who about that is? You, <laughs> good. Um, it's a framework on, uh, for your Linux systems. If you have a Linux desktop, you probably have it installed on your machine, um, if it's a modern one. Um, and it, uh, the task of this service is to locate where you are. So applications, when they need access to your location data, that's the service they need to talk to. Firefox still hasn't ported to that. It's really nice. It would be really nice if they do that, <laughs> if anyone of you works on Firefox. Um, uh, as I said, geolocation service, uh, it's written in C um, entirely. Um, and I've been the maintainer since the rewrite. There was a complete rewrite because the old code was really bad and stuff. Um, and that was 2013, so it's been quite many years that I've been maintaining it. Um, so I thought, let, let's oxidize it. Those of you who don't know this term, um, it means to, to port it to Rust, port the code to Rust. Um, but why? Well, it will be uh, singing to the car, but still, um, crash reports. I get crash reports all the time. I'm tired of them. So I, I want to get, I don't want to deal with those anymore. Um, also leaks. Um, it's, your location is one of the most sensitive data on, on your machine. Um, you don't want to give it to any app or like, you, you don't want um, anything bad to happen to, uh, to, to your data, to this data of yours. So that is, is another reason. But most importantly, I just love Rust. Um, I don't do Rust in my day job, at least at the moment. Um, so in my spare time, at least, I don't want to look at C, and I want to do something um, nice like Rust. Um, uh, so what, what are the challenges for porting GeoClue uh, to, to Rust? Um, so first of all, the, the thing that came to my mind was, was uh, this um, build system called Mason. Um, all the system level uh, uh, services like System D and uh, related services uh, on your system, they uh, use, make use of this uh, build system nowadays. Also all of GNOME and hopefully at some point maybe KDE will use it too, uh, if they are not already, I don't know. Um, so yeah, and uh, GeoClue uses it. and. Um, uh, it, provide, it has Rust support in it for a very long time, but it doesn't have cargo support, and it looks unlikely there will ever be any cargo support there. Um, so I thought there's, this would be the biggest challenge, um, but we'll, we'll see later how it will work out. And the other thing I thought of was Dbus. How do I talk to Dbus? What is Dbus? Um, it's a very efficient uh, inter-process communication protocol. Um, and it's very popular on the desktop and in embedded systems as well. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the other um, uh, projects like System D and related services and GNOME, uh, uh, in the same two bubbles, this also um, uh, Dbus also exists and it's very popular. Um, and I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's very awesome and very efficient. Um, there is fortunately a crate Dbus uh, RS is called. Uh, but it relies on libdbus, uh, which is a C library. So it relies heavily on unsafe uh, C code. And also libdbus is not famous to be a good API or a library. Um, so, and it shows in dbus RS, unfortunately. Um, there is the other issues with, the, with this library, but I still decided to use it and not just use it. But I also contributed um, in terms of issues and also patches and stuff. And I thought I'll, I'll just use it. And until um, Rust GNOME Hackfest that happened in May this year um, in, in Berlin, 
and I was uh, going to uh, port GeoClue to, to Rust, and I started doing it. And the Mason part turned out to be much, much easier than I thought. Um, it's a workaround still, but it's an easy workaround. Um, I can call cargo from Mason easily. Um, but um, turns out the Dbus RS API, uh, at least the, the one I wanted to use, I wanted to use code generation, it was very, very complicated. Um, also, sorry uh, to, for Paul, um, uh, I will I have to convey a lot of information here, so if you don't understand something, that's fine. I'm doing a bad job. Please grab me after the talk, and I'll explain further to you. I'll be happy to. So, okay. Um, Divas uh, create from scratch. I thought, like, maybe uh, that's an option. Um, so, uh, I was like, how hard can it be? <laughs> so, um, let's see what's involved first. Um, so I looked at the spec, there's a Dbus spec, there's one page which explains everything. It's a really nice to, nice written spec, in my opinion. Um, so I start with the low level, and the lowest level is just, a, it's just message passing on, on, um, on any kind of um, uh, uh, socket or any kind of medium. It's a medium agnostic, actually, the protocol. Um, and uh, there's a wire format that you have to uh, implement to, to be able to talk to, to Dbus. Um, and it's also called uh, G variant because uh, uh, Dbus was implemented by GNOME folks and um, Glib, uh, the main library in GNOME and other libraries, they, they made use of that from the very beginning. Um, and uh, they realized that the format, the wire format of Dbus, it can be used in a very generic way. So Glib provides API to use it in a very generic way outside of Dbus as well. So it's, it could be like a database that people use it that way. Um, and what it, um, what it that is, it's mostly defining data types and their encodings. Um, by encoding, I mean uh, you have to have alignment. Um, all the data is aligned. Uh, if you don't know what alignment means, again, grab me after the talk and I'll explain it to you what that is all about. Um, and um, uh, Dbus has natural alignment for most part, 99% of it. There is one exception, I'll talk later about that. Um, and every data type that uh, Dbus defines has a signature, which is a string that uh, um, is just a designation for that particular data type. Uh, we will see the use of that in a bit. Um, so we start with the basic data types. What are they? They map exactly uh, to the Rust data types. Um, it's a subset of Rust data types, actually. Um, the only difference is that they are encoded differently, of course, um, because they need to go on a socket, not in a programming language. Um, then there's container data types. Um, array maps nicely to a vector, um, or array itself. Um, structure, it's a bit weird to have like a dynamic structure. It maps actually to struct in, uh, in uh, Rust, but um, of course it's more dynamic, so we can't just use a struct uh, as is in, in, in Rust. And dict is just a short for dictionary. Um, that maps nicely to hash maps. Um, and most importantly, there is another data type called variant, which is basically just generic data. So if you want to put, um, you can put any of the data, uh, data types I mentioned before in this uh, variant. And you, uh, what variant contains is the signature of the data and the data itself. Uh, so if you want to transfer a data in a very generic way, this is the way. And it, this data type is used a lot on, in Dbus. Uh, on a high level, um, you have objects. You, when you talk to the Dbus, you usually uh, deal with uh, objects that are exposed on these specific uh, paths. This is the, the strings that are shown here, they're object paths. And um, the way you talk to them is through interfaces. Um, this is a really horrible example, sorry for that. Um, there's a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship here between the objects and the, um, and the interfaces, but it doesn't have to be. Any object can implement any number of interfaces. And that, what that means is that if they implement an interface, they need to provide specific API of that interface. And you can have methods um, which, with in, in and out parameters, and they have the same the data type. They have to have the data types that I said before. Um, sorry. Um, signals is just a method, but in the reverse direction. Um, if a service needs to notify uh, apps of some change, they use these signals. Um, and they also have uh, parameters, but only, I think, in parameters. I think all out parameters, too. Not so sure right now. Um, 
And of course, properties. Uh, objects can have properties um, that uh, they expose, and they can be read only. They can be write, read, write both. Um, so I thought, actually, not. It's not that hard after all. Um, am I going too fast? <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Um, so after three days, which includes the hackfest that was and I had an excuse to not do my work work, and I could do the rest. So I, um, I started implementing it like as a first as a hack. Um, and what I could just accomplish in uh, three days, the first day I established a connection to the Dbus and the, on, the, uh, on the serv to a service. Um, and I called a method that felt so great. Um, within three days, I could do this. Um, sorry. And um, so I was like, yeah, let's, let's do this. It doesn't sound too hard. <laughs> um, so, Zebus was born. Uh, don't ask about the name, it's a cool name, and you have to accept it. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's start with the, the hard part, the low level, um, uh, which is called the G variant, as I mentioned before, um, which is dealing with the wire format, the data types. So, I came up with this awesome trait um, to represent a, uh, the data type that can be encoded to and encoded from uh, Dbus uh, wire format. Um, it's pretty simple, actually, uh, I think. Um, encoding is, I tried to make it very efficient. So um, encoding is, uh, I can't make it efficient because you have to copy data uh, because the, uh, uh, the Dbus encoding is different from the Rust encoding. So. Uh, there's no there's no way out of this, as far as I know. If you know a way out of it, please do tell me. I would love to know that. Um, but decoding is, I made it very efficient so that you don't have to copy the data. You, uh, if Only for container types you have to allocate, but uh, even that, only the container, not the actual data contained in it. Um, and signature, um, you, see, you might see there's a constant signature and then there's a signature. For simple data types, it, it's exactly the same. Uh, the string that represents it, like the, it's just one character. Um, but for complex data types, they, the container types, they have to also specify the, what is in, included in them, so it's more dynamic. Um, so it's not the same. The, the constant, uh, actually I have a pointer. But it doesn't work on this, does it? <laughs> no? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so this, uh, this uh, signature, the constant you see on the top, and the signature method, they, they don't always uh, have the same output. Um, so basic data type, as I mentioned before, same as Rust, very easy to implement. I did that. Container types were the next. Um, array, as I said, vector, uh, only thing is that I had to add a constraint that uh, it can only have the variant uh, type. Uh, in it, um, the only other types that Dbus supports, um, not anything else. Uh, structures, uh, um, yeah, I have to create another uh, data type for that. Uh, kept it as simple as I could. Uh, you you have the fields on the structure, and you can uh, create them, and then you can you know use that, and then you implement variant type for it, so that you can encode and decode structures. Um, and of course, the, the most important one, uh, variant, which, as I said, uh, contains a signature of what it, what it contains, um, and the data in encoded format. Now, that's the important bit, that it keeps already in encoded format. It doesn't encode when it's needed, but already. Um, I thought that would be more efficient. Uh, we will see later how much trouble it gives me. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is how you will use variant in isolation without Dbus. There's no Dbus here. Um, so this is the API I came up with. This is my unit test, um, which just shows you, like, you create a type that is Dbus, uh, which, which implements variant type, and then you create a variant from that, and then you, you, know, you can do different tests on it. You can get the data back from it, um, and you can, uh, and once it's encoded, you can also de decode it and stuff. Um, yeah, um, I lied before when I showed the variant uh, type um, trait. Um, it um, um, it has lifetimes on it, and that um, uh, it it it. I did it to be as efficient as uh, possible, and I was successful in making it efficient. But at the same time, it make 
life much, much harder. Each time I change anything, life types comes on the way. And I've been uh, bugging a lot of people, and started in, especially Florian over there, about how to <laughs> deal with uh, lifetimes. Um, oops, sorry. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> um, so back to Debus. Um, so this is what the Debus API looks like. You just create a connection. Uh, there's two kind of um, uh, common connections that you talk to. One is a session connection, which is for the user, and then there's a system connection, which is uh, used by, for example, GeoClue for system services. Um, and, um, and then you just call a method on it. You specify the, the, the service, the path, the, the interface, and the method, and um, parameters, which are uh, uh, zero here. So I pass none. Then you get a reply. And then you just get uh, the first uh, out parameter, and uh, it's the type is string, so I could uh, get the string and display it. Um, all done with variance, right? <laughs> it's all done. Um, that's what I thought, and I thought like, yeah, um, I, I, have, I didn't talk about the dictionary part, which I implemented really late, uh, but it's kind of implemented already, um, and I thought I'm done with variance. But um, I added new test cases for, for the dictionary. Uh, I actually, these, these test cases were more complex. Uh, and I was like, why is it failing? I thought maybe I'd made the wrong test case or something else wrong with it. Um, and then I had this face. This is the actual picture of me, actually. <laughs> That's how I felt. Um, variant alignment is all wrong. It's completely wrong. Why? Dbus has some strange rules. Turns out Dbus is not that easy after all. <laughs> so, um, first of all, alignment of data when you encode it is based on the whole message. Not, it's not individual level. So if you put, uh, for example, integer in a structure, um, the alignment of the integer is not based on the parent structure, but uh, the whole message uh, when you put all the data together. Um, which is okay uh, on, it, on its own, but that's not the only thing. And also, like, if you see the, at first what I came up with, uh, there is no way uh, with this um, uh, API, um, I don't pass to encoder what, how many bytes were before. Um, so with this API, I cannot accomplish this. But I modified it soon after, and I just added, like, n bytes before. So then uh, encoder knew how many bytes were before, so it... It, it knew how, many, how, many, how much padding to add for alignment and stuff like that. So that, that was an easy problem to solve on its own. Um, but variant, uh, uh, sorry, a variant and contained value do not need alignment, which is OK, but uh, surprising, but OK, we will deal with this. It's no alignment better. But the problem is it's grandchildren do. Like if you have a value, if you have, for example, a structure in a variant, uh, that structure does not need uh, padding but, uh, or alignment, but what is all the fields in the structure, they do. So how do you pass that all along, all the information? Um, and as I showed you before, variant um, already keeps things in encoded format. So you, when, when you create a variant in isolation, then you put it in a message, the encoding is not correct. And that's what was wrong in my whole thing. So it turns out my whole structure, the whole API I built in three months, um, was fundamentally wrong. <laughs> so I've been on this for a month now. Um, mind you, I only work on this in my spare time, which is very limited. So it's three, one month is not that long in, the, uh, in reality. Um, so I um, still haven't solved this problem. I came up with multiple, multiple solutions. Uh, they all had some problem in the end, after all, and I couldn't solve it. Now I have a solution, but before I implement it, I have to kill the lifetimes from the variant because that makes, uh, like more, when I said I have came up with multiple solution and um, many of them failed because of this lifetimes because I couldn't just satisfy the lifetimes. So um, what I, the lesson I learned from all this practice is that efficiency is not a religion. I was being so focused on making it uh, very efficient that um, I was uh, making it more efficient than I would be in C. In C, I would be using um, 
something called GObjects from GLib API, and they use reference uh, counting all the time. That's what they're based on. Um, and their reference counting is by default atomic, so it's much more heavier uh, than the RC we have in the reference counting type in, in Rust. Um, so uh, why not use it? So I'll be now changing it. I'll be removing lifetimes, uh, use, make use of RC to share uh, data between different points of the code, and then it will work out. I have a solution. It will work. <laughs> if not, I'm, I'm in this uh, conference for three more, four more days, so I'll grab someone to help me. <laughs> uh, that's my hope, at least. Um, so anyway, once I solve that problem, which I will, looking forward, um, I want to separate out the, uh, the variant create into its own create. As I said, uh, it's useful in a generic way, and there is at least one application which is in Rust um, uh, that uh, the, the maintainer said, yeah, if you make a create, I'll use it. Um, so yeah, I have to do that. Um, then in Dbus, I have to have an API for receiving messages. I have to implement signals, uh, which should be pretty trivial, actually. Um, should be <laughs> in quotes. Um, async, I need to add async, uh, asynchronous um, API. And I'm hope, uh, hoping that uh, actually the API will be just asynchronous by default. Um, and uh, hoping to use the new async STD, or how do you pronounce it? I don't know, uh, crate. Um, and it looks pretty awesome, that crate. Um, and also, like, it's good that uh, I was stuck on the variant part until now. Um, so that all the async stories all in stable, so I can just use the async from stable. Um, High-level API, then I need to add, uh, that shouldn't be extremely hard, but uh, I need to be careful in creating a good API. Fortunately, glib has a really good uh, high-level API, and I can copy that. Um, but, but at, not copy, but at least I, learn, I can learn a lot from that, so I don't need to figure out a lot of things. Um, and um, code generation, most of the uh, Dbus code that I see out there, they use code generation. Um, you give it like the, there's, uh, you can define your Dbus API in XML, which people do, and you can give, they give it to code generator and it generates the code. Um, so I need to implement that. Um, and uh, maybe also macros. Um, or making it super easy if you don't want to do code generation. Some people first, I don't know why, but they don't like code generation, so sure, uh, for them there should be some macros. Um, and a lot more of easy stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it from me, uh, if you have any questions. <laughs>